Welcome everyone to our credit and debt webinar, Unlocking Your Financial Freedom, How to Restore Your Credit, Eliminate Debt, and Leverage Credit to Create Wealth. Please feel free to type in any questions you may have in the chat. We will have an open Q&A at the end of the session. Also tell us where you are logging in from today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm freedom and financial life coach, Sapphire Star, owner of Organized Chaos Enterprise. And over 10 years ago, I paid off $33,000 worth of debt, saved to invest, fired my boss, started an online business and began traveling the world. I wrote a book called Live Freely, Freedom to Work Whenever, Wherever, to share my story, to empower others, to empower their money mindset, master their finances, and own their future through real estate investing. As a result of working with us, our clients and small business owners are able to get out of debt, achieve financial freedom, and create more time to do what they love. If you haven't already, please be sure to head over to organize-kaos.com, organize-chaos.com to join our free monthly newsletter to receive personal and small business financial education and resources. Just a highlight of our upcoming events. In September, we will be having our free, the four-step financial freedom framework, as well as our upcoming boot camp, our real estate jumpstart boot camp, how to get started in real estate with little money and little experience. Again, head over to organize-chaos.com and click events to sign up. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? In this webinar, you will learn credit repair techniques and understanding the factors affecting your credit score and learn how to effectively dispute errors, negotiate with creditors, and build a solid credit history. Debt elimination strategies, explore proven methods to eliminate debt from the debt snowball to the debt consolidation and regain financial freedom. Leveraging credit to create wealth, unlocking the secrets to using credit as a tool for investment, business opportunities, and other wealth building strategies. I always share with my clients, credit education is the best credit repair. What is credit? Credit is the ability of the consumer to acquire goods or services before payments with the faith that the payment will be made in the future. What three numbers are important to your financial future, your financial health, your credit score? The average FICO score in the United States is 711 and the average vantage score is 688. Your credit score is one of the most important measures of your financial health. It tells lenders at a glance how responsible you use credit. The better, the better your score, the easier you will find it to be approved for new loans or lines of credit. A higher credit score can also open the door to lowest available interest rates when you borrow. Why credit is important. A low score can cost you money. You pay more in interest. It's a barrier to employment. Most, of, if not all employers now pull your credit report. You may end up paying higher deposits and higher insurance premium with a low credit score. A high score increases opportunities. 
You would qualify for better mortgage rates and terms, auto financing loans, business loans, credit card, annual percentage rates. A low score goes beyond your credit. Six out of 10 private employers check credit histories of job applicants. Landlords pull credit report to select tenants. What impacts your credit? Roughly 35% of your credit score is impacted by your payment history. This describes your bill paying habits. 30% of your score is based on how much you owe or your credit utilization. As you can see, a huge chunk of your credit score is impacted by, which is 65% is impacted by your payment history, paying your bills on time, and how much of your credit you're actually using. The utilization is the total amount owed on all accounts. You want to keep your credit utilization below 30% of available credit lines. For example, if your credit lines are is $1,000, you don't want to spend over $300 to stay within your utilization, 30% utilization. And I recommend to my clients to stay anywhere from 10 to 20% just to be safe. Next, 15% of your score is how long you've had credit or your credit history. Typically, it is better to have long histories with, great, with credit greater than two years. The average consumer's oldest account is 10 years. Roughly 10% of your score is made up of the types of credit you use or credit mix. A healthy mix of credit have both revolving accounts such as credit cards and installment accounts such as car loan or mortgage. Bank cards are better for your score than department store cards. The last 10% is based on credit inquiries. How many new credit cards or credit lines have you applied for? You want to keep credit pulls to a minimum because it can negatively impact your score. A pro tip I share with my clients is when applying for credit, be sure you have a high chance of getting approved by reviewing criteria as well as plan for credit pulls in advance and apply for multiple credits on the same day to count as one pull. Keep in mind, there are subtle differences with your FICO score and your Vantage score. FICO versus Vantage, each model weighs your score differently. The Fair Isaac Corporation introduced the first FICO score modeling to lenders in 1989. According to the company, FICO scores are used today by 90% of top lenders to make lending decisions. The Vantage score model wasn't introduced until 2006. It was developed by the three major consumer credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, to create a more predictive model that is easy to understand and apply. Although both models are designed to predict a consumer's ability to repay a debt, they do not treat all credit data equally. FICO gives more weight to payment history and how much you owe, your 35, 30, 15, 10, 10 models. So your payment history and your utilization. Whereas Vantage Score latest version emphasized total cre credit usage and your balances. Vantage uses levels of influence, such as extremely influential. This is your total credit usage, your balance and your available credit. Highly influential is your credit mix and your experience. Moderately influential is your payment history. Less influential is the age of your credit history and new accounts. 
The better credit score to consider is the one your prospective lender will use to approve or decline your application for credit. Both credit ranges, FICO and Vantage, ranges between 300 is the low and 850 is the high. Since more lenders use the FICO score model, you may be better off checking that score before applying. Always ask your lender which credit score model they'll be checking. Historically, car loans and credit karma uses the Vantage score model. Here are some common credit challenges some people face. Late payments, high credit utilization, which we discussed before, is a huge part, 65% of your FICO score. Too many inquiries that falls under your new inquiries or your hard pull versus soft pull. A hard pull negatively impact your score, whereas a soft pull is typically done by your employer or when you're applying for an apartment and it doesn't necessarily impact, it doesn't negatively impact your score when someone just wants to look at your credit report. Lastly, inaccurate information. So how can you repair or restore your credit? Removing all negative entries from your credit report does not need to be difficult or time consuming. You can follow these simple steps to plan to get started immediately. Step one, you want to review your credit report. You can go to annualcreditreport.com and get all three major credit bureaus report, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Step two, you want to review your credit reports and dispute inaccuracies and errors such as address, name, and unauthorized account. Step three, you can negotiate with creditors to do what is called a pay for delete. I recommend this strategy for debts that are younger than two years. I don't recommend doing this for credit or collections or negatively negative things on your credit for uh, beyond that are older than two years because what can happen is you can wake what they call it, wake the account back up and it can start the clock over again. So you can do what is called a pay for delete and negotiate with creditors to take a settlement. The reality is you don't owe the collection agency. You actually owe the original, original creditors. So the burden of proof is on the collection agency to show and tell that you actually owe them money. Once they verify and show that you owe money, you can negotiate a settlement because they purchased that debt for pennies on the dollar. So either way, they are making money. Step four, you want to build a positive credit history. Late payments, for every late payment that you make on your credit report, it stays on there for seven years. And once those late payments are made, there's nothing you can do about them. However, you can begin to start creating habits to pay your bills on time, to start rebuilding a positive credit history. And over time, those late payments will fall off. But keep in mind, it's seven years. I recommend and suggest to my clients to set their bills up on auto pay at least for the minimum payment. That way you don't have to worry about missing a payment. And if you miss a payment, sometimes things happen. And if you miss a payment, I suggest calling the bank and asking them, hey, can you forgive this? Because, you know, explain the situation. Sometimes they will remove a late payment if it's within the 30 days. And next and lastly, you want to pay down your balances. Remember, credit utilization impacts 30% of your score. So if your utilization is above 30%,
you can instantly improve your credit score and your credit rating by just setting up a debt elimination plan and beginning to pay down your debts. Speaking of eliminating debt, <laughs> figuring out how to get out of debt can be stressful, but having a repayment strategy can help you focus. Here are four ways or four strategies you can use to eliminate debt. Number one is the debt snowball. Number two is the debt avalanche. Debt number three is the debt consolidation. And number four, you can use balance transfers. So number one, what is a debt snowball? The debt snowball essentially creates a snowball effect when you list your debts from smallest balance to the largest balance, independent of the interest, and you pay the minimum on all the debts except the smallest balance. The smallest balance you want to put extra toward this particular account. You can start to see progress by paying off the lowest balance first. Once the lowest balance is paid, you then roll over that payment that you're making and putting extra towards, roll that payment over to the next until you have completely paid off the debt. I use the debt snowball to pay off $33,000 worth of student loan debt, car loan debt, and credit card debt. Next, we have the debt avalanche. The debt avalanche is when you list debts from highest interest owed to lowest. And say, and this can save you money on interest when you pay the minimum on all the debts while putting extra funds toward the balance with the highest interest rate. Once the costliest account is paid off, the extra funds move to the balance with the next highest rate until all debts are repaid. The debt avalanche is a way to pay off debt and save money while paying off debt because you are taking care of the debt that is taking the most out of your pocket. Some prefer the debt snowball method because you tend to see progress much quicker and over time, and that builds momentum and your motivation. It's important to decide which strategy fits your personality. Again, getting out of debt can feel insurmountable. To make it more manageable and affordable, consider consolidating and refinancing your outstanding balance. With this strategy, it typically involves another type of loan that pays off your existing debt at a lower interest rate. Debt consolidation, you may qualify to get a personal loan at a lower rate that can be used to consolidate your debt. For example, you can use a personal loan to pay off various credit card balances at higher interest rates. You'll trade multiple you'll trade multiple balances at high rates with one loan at a lower rate. This makes paying off your debt much more palatable. Lastly, we have balance transfer. If you have a strong credit score, you may qualify for a balance transfer credit card. This is specifically used to transfer your balance from one or multiple cars to another with a lower interest rate. A balance transfer card is typically only a good idea. How, sorry, a balance transfer card is typically only a good idea. However, if you pay most of all your debt during the promotional period, which can span from 12 to 21 months. If you go this route, expect to pay three to 5% in fees and review when the promotional period ends. The interest savings can help propel your debt payoff. For example, let's say you have $5,000 in credit card debt at 18% and you pay $125 per month. 
Then you get approved for a 15 month 0% balance transfer card with a 3% balance transfer fee. To pay off your balance during the promotional period, your new estimated payment would be $343 and you will save $2,000, 254 $2,542 in interest. While the interest saving is great, your monthly payment more than doubles. If you can afford to do that, this can be a worthwhile strategy. Now, let's review some case studies. Let's imagine that you have the following loans. $4,000 credit card debt, 1500 car repair loan, another credit card for $3,000, school student loan debt of $8,000, a personal loan of $500, and a car loan for $5,000. Now, with the debt snowball method, you would list all your debts from smallest to largest. Then you would make the minimum payment on all the debts in this example, you would make minimum payment on all the debts except the personal loan and you would put extra towards the personal loan. So paying more than the minimum amount. Once the personal loan is paid for, you're then gonna roll over that monthly amount that you were paying and roll that over into your car repair loan. And this is going to create a snowball effect until you've paid off all the debt. Next, we have the debt avalanche. With the debt avalanche, you list your debts from highest interest to lowest interest rate. In this case, credit card number one has the highest interest rate. So you would make minimum payments on all the debts except credit card number one. You would pay extra towards credit card number one until you have chipped away at this debt. And when this debt is paid off, you then roll over and begin paying the remaining debts until the debt is paid off. Here's a comparison here, the debt snowball versus the avalanche method. You can see with the debt snowball, you're paying off the debt in 25 months versus one month shorter than one month more than the avalanche method. The total amount paid, as you can see, you pay more in terms of the amount that you paid over time. You pay more using the debt smoke snowball method versus the avalanche method. So you see the cost of the debt is more with the debt snowball. With the avalanche method, you are wasting $1,517 in interest versus $2,660. So as you can see, again, you can save money as well as time using the debt avalanche. But again, choose a method or strategy that works best with your personality. How can we leverage credit to create wealth? First, let's discuss good debt versus bad debt. Bad debt is debt that take money out of our pocket. Usually this is debt that we incur to purchase liabilities, things that don't bring value into our life or there's no return on the money. Good debt is something that we purchase that creates value in our life. Essentially, the interest we are paying on that debt is less than the potential money we can make for whatever we using the good debt for. To leverage means to borrow capital with the expectation that the financial gain will be greater than the amount borrowed. You use a certain amount of that money like a lever to generate greater wealth. Generally, leveraging debt is done to pay for something that becomes an asset and generates income. Leveraging debt involves weighing the financial risk 
and the potential for rewards to decide whether it's a good fit for your situation. Examples of ways to leverage debt could be a mortgage to buy a house, taking a personal loan to pay off high interest debt, a loan for a small business, or a loan for the expansion of a business. Here are seven tips on how you can leverage debt. Building a good credit score, which we talked about at the beginning of the webinar, can open up better loan terms and opportunities to leverage debt. Remember, with a high score, you're paying less in interest and you're paying less with premiums. Number two, you can invest in your education. Invest in knowledge that can generate income and create a way for you to create wealth. Learning something new that has the potential to increase your cash flow is worth the investment. Take on a home mortgage. You can invest in real estate. Investing in a high yield asset like real estate investment properties is a powerful way to leverage debt. To do this successfully, you must research the market and learn from experts to understand how to choose an investment property. You can start and grow a business. Taking on debt to start a business is risky, but it can be worthwhile if your venture succeeds. You should research the market, create projections, and understand your break-even point and consider the expert who will join the businesses. With a clear business plan, taking on debt for business can be a smart move, but without a clear plan, it's a liability. It's important to have a business plan. Take advantage of tax deductions. Some interest payments on debt are tax deductible if you count them as a business expense. This can reduce your net tax obligation. Always remember to speak with an accountant or a tax professional to understand whether your interest payments qualify for tax deductions. Here are some tools and resources that we recommend to help you eliminate debt and restore your credit and leverage debt to create wealth. Consider reading my book, Live Freely, Freedom to Work, whenever, wherever, where I lay out a simple to follow financial freedom framework that includes how to get out of debt and understanding the credit game. One of the first steps to creating financial freedom and taking control of your finance is budgeting. This is essentially the financial roadmap to help you understand your income, your expenses, your saving, and your debt. I recommend Every Dollar. Every Dollar is a budget app and they have a desktop and a mobile version that uses a zero-based budgeting strategy where every dollar is accounted for. If you haven't already, please go check out our Budget and Save webinar we did last month. It's free at organized-chaos.com under our Financial Freedom Academy under courses. Lastly, again, check out annualcreditreport.com. You can pull your free credit report from all three bureaus to check for errors and dispute inaccuracies. If you would like to take a deeper dive to unlocking your financial future, we offer one-on-one -on -one coaching at Organized Chaos to partner with you to achieve your financial goals using our four-step financial freedom framework to helping you with budgeting, saving, eliminating debt, credit restoration, and investing. We offer our three-month, six-month, and 12-month plan. Each plan considers one-on-one -on -one virtual calls with me, the financial freedom framework, our financial planning workbook, unlimited email and tech support, 
and a free copy of my book, Live Freely, Freedom to Work, whenever, wherever. The longer programs include discounts to our paid events, workshops, and retreats. For a limited time, we are offering our attendance tonight a special limited time offer where you get a substantial discount to our coaching programs for attending for tonight. Again, I recommend booking a free consultation at organized-chaos.com to discuss what plan is best for you. Any questions? Please put them in the chat, put them in the comment section. Thank you so much for attending our webinar tonight. It's always an honor to be here with you, sharing this valuable information to help you buy back your time, organize your finances and create financial freedom and to create wealth. Feel free to send me an email at info at organized-chaos.com if you have additional questions after the live. Again, thank you.